An urn contains an unknown number of black balls and an unknown number of white balls. John draws a ball from the urn 10 times, placing the ball back in the urn after each draw. Six of the draws are black and four of the draws are white. John then proposes a betting game with a $3 buy-in. If the next draw is black, you receive $5. If the next draw is white, you get nothing. John claims that this is a fair game. Would you play this game? Take a few moments to pause the video and try this question out for yourself. Let's move on to the answer now. Let's start by trying to extract all the data from the question. We know that we have empirical data, six black draws and four white draws. From this, we can find the empirical probability that the next draw will be black, 0.6. Similarly, the empirical probability that the next draw will be white. Additionally, we know the bet payoffs. Since the buy-in is $3 and the payout is 5 if we draw black, black gives us a plus 2 payoff. We don't get anything back if we draw white, so white has a negative 3 payoff. With the probabilities and the payoffs, we can find the expected value of the bet. Multiplying 2 times 0.6 minus 3 times 0.4 gives us 0. What? The game is... fair? Are we done? What's the catch? Well, the catch is that we only drew from the urn 10 times. And so our key insight in this question is that we only have a small sample size. So how sure are we of these empirical probabilities? We are currently using a frequentist approach. Instead, we can use Bayesian methods to make a more informed probability given the data we have. To follow the framework, we must construct a likelihood, prior, and posterior. With this new insight, let's restart our attempt on this question. Let's start by defining the probability of drawing a black ball as a variable p. Now, we know that each draw from the urn behaves like a Bernoulli random variable, with probability p of being black. Since our empirical data is effectively the number of black draws in 10 samples, our likelihood function is a binomial, with n equals 10 and probability p. Moving on, we can get the prior distribution. We can set the prior distribution as a beta distribution with parameters 1, 1. This is a standard conjugate prior for the binomial distribution. The reason both of the parameters are 1 is because initially we are weighting both classes, black and white, equally and saying that we have no prior assumptions of what their probabilities will be. To move from our prior to our posterior, we simply add the number of black balls and white balls that we see once we run our experiment drawing from the urn. We can visualize this a little bit more by drawing out the probability density function. Initially, with the parameters 1, 1, we see that the probability density is simply uniform over all possible values of the parameter p. We can now simulate out the process of data generation. Let's bring out the urn and draw from it to see how each new piece of information updates our posterior distribution beliefs. First, we draw a white ball. As you can see, this heavily shifts our current beliefs towards white. We see that there is now a zero probability of P being 1, that is, we are 100% sure that the urn is not all black. Then, our probability density monotonically and linearly increases as the value of p decreases. Making a second draw, we get a black ball. Now, we see that the PDF is perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Unlike the first case, where we had a uniform distribution, this distribution is fatter towards its middle and skinnier towards its tails. This makes sense, since we know that after drawing one black and one white ball, p cannot be 0 or 1. Let's continue drawing out more balls. Another black ball skews the distribution slightly towards black. As we draw another black ball, the distribution gets even further skewed. This process repeats with black and white balls slowly shifting the distribution with each successive experiment until we have finally completed our samples and gotten all 10 draws. Now, let's see what this resulting posterior distribution tells us about our bet. We can start by finding the expected value of p given the beta distribution with parameters 7 and 5. From the formula of the expected value of a beta distribution, we know that this is simply 7 divided by 7 plus 5. This fraction is strictly lesser than 0.6. We can now plug this p-value into the expected payoff for our initial bet. 
2 times p minus 3 times 1 minus p, we see that the new expected value is now strictly less than 0. And thus, this is not a fair bet. We shouldn't take this bet. Did you figure out this bet was a bad idea? Or did you fall for John's trickery? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.